Hey everybody, this is Beat the Bush. Today we're gonna talk about how and when to pump the cheapest gas. Now some people think if you pump gas in the morning, it's cooler, and so the gasoline is denser, and so you'll get more bang for your money on the order of a few percent. The whole theory behind this is that the gasoline will actually expand as you heat it up. This translates to about 1% every 19 degrees Fahrenheit and 1% every 10 degrees centigrade. To visualize this, you can have a beaker of gasoline at 60 degrees Fahrenheit and if you heat it up the same amount here to 79 degrees, it would increase by a little smidgen, just 1% more here. So the retailers pay at a temperature compensated price of 60 degrees Fahrenheit. But then when they sell it to us, it's a little warmer and so it's less dense in energy. So there's this argument that they're selling us something that's not as dense and so it doesn't contain as much energy. There's this paper, I'll link it down in the video description below. You don't really need to read it or anything, but it's there if you need it for reference. Basically what it says is that places like Canada where it's generally on average much cooler, they actually use temperature compensated pumps so that they won't actually lose money. However, in the United States, they actually don't have temperature compensated pumps. It says that the market forces are there and so even if they have a little bit more profits here, they'll probably squeeze it all out anyway. So actually, if we ever implement a temperature compensated pump across all of the United States, it was just gonna raise up in price accordingly. It might go either way. If we implement this temperature compensated pump thing, it might actually lower our gasoline prices. It might actually equalize anyway with the market or the retailers might push that price of these pumps onto the consumer and so our gasoline prices might go up a little bit because they have to use this new equipment. I don't really care either way because this is kind of theoretical and they're never going to implement this because it's not to their advantage. There's just too much friction so I'm not even going to talk about that. So the argument for pumping in the morning is that the gasoline in here would actually cool down enough so that when you pump in the morning, you would actually get a denser gasoline and therefore you save money. Thing is the container underground is actually a double walled container, kind of like your thermistor, so that the temperature above, it can vary very widely and it's not gonna change the temperature underground very much. Kind of like in a cave where the outside temperature changes a lot, but then the inside kind of stays pretty cool, you know, no matter how hot it gets outside. In that sense, the temperature can fluctuate all you want, but the degree change in the reservoir is not gonna change very much. Now that's a different story. If some of the gasoline went up to the pump, maybe a few gallons would be sitting there. So for a gas station that doesn't get fueled very much, it may be advantageous for you to pull up to the gas station and when you see someone leave, you can go right to the same pump because they already pumped the hot gasoline into their car. You go up behind them and you use the same pump and then you can extract the coolest uh, temperature gasoline. That's the whole point. Now this only works for a gas station that is not very frequently refueled. For a very busy gas station that is frequently refueled, for example, the one I go to, I see the refueling truck there almost every single day. It's always putting more gas in there. Basically in that case, the fuel is the temperature of your fuel truck gasoline tank. And it probably hasn't cooled down. It's been above and you know, the sun's been beating on it. It's probably a lot warmer on the order of, you know, like almost like room temperature because it's been sitting in there for so long. In that case, once it goes in the reservoir, it's gonna stay that temperature for freaking long, like hours, days, or whatnot. So because of that, you can't really wait around for it to cool. So if you go to a gas station that has been refueled uh, quite often, every single day, then there's really not much you can do to get a cooler gasoline so that you get more density in your gasoline. So for frequently refueled gasoline, it, if it's really, really hot, then you might want to use a pump right after someone else. It's not going to cause you that much effort because you're not going there in the morning purposely. You're just noticing that, yeah, you know, whenever that happens, you just go to the pump. If no one is at the gas station, you just have to, you know, deal with it and just take one of the pumps uh, at random. Maybe someone used it before, maybe not. If you happen to get gas in the morning anyway, sure. And if you happen to get gas from a gas station that is infrequently used, yes, in the morning, it would matter. So how much does this matter anyway? On the order of a percent. 
So if you get like $50 of gasoline, you may save only like 50 cents each time. So it may not be worthwhile to actually, um, you know, do anything about this because it's so little. Now there are other ways less ad hoc in order to just save 1% on fuel. For example, you can use 5% cashback credit cards that I always uh, talk about. Another way is to use gasbuddy.com and find out what the cheapest gas station is on your route to and from work or to and from wherever you're going. You should really never go more than a few blocks out of your way to get to the gas station. So just to run through an example, if gasoline is $3 a gallon, if your car gets 30 miles per gallon and you're trying to drive to a gas station that's one mile away, that means each mile costs you 10 cents in gasoline. So you gotta go to the gas station and then come back. So that's 20 cents. And the car depreciation just from wear and tear you usually just double what you use in gas and it's another 20 cents. So this is costing you 40 cents just to go to a gas station and come back that is one mile away. So the less you fill up, the less you're gonna save. Let's say you're filling up 10 gallons. It actually eats up four cents a gallon of savings. So it better be more than four cents cheaper if you're driving one mile away. The thing is, driving one mile away, it's just a waste of energy and resources and your time. So I really wouldn't ever go out a mile ever, even if it's like 20 cents cheaper. Time is worth quite a bit and if you're sitting there idling, waiting at the Costco gas station, it's actually costing you quite a bit. You're probably burning up enough fuel to negate all the savings that you are getting at Costco. So I actually never get fuel from Costco because of the such long line. Another thing you can do is to check your tire pressure to make sure it's inflated properly to the manufacturer recommended pressure. You might wonder how much it matters. It matters about 0.3% per PSI. So if you need to fill it up to 30 PSI and over time it lost some pressure to 20 PSI, you might not be able to see that the tire is you know, like really low in pressure unless you check with the gauge. This lower tire pressure actually causes your car to work harder in order to turn the wheel. It's kind of like whenever your tire pressure is a little low in a bicycle, you have to work quite a bit harder. So if it's 10 PSI lower, you're actually using 3% more gasoline. So that's just the way it is. It matters quite a bit. So in summer, yes, you can go to a gas station that is infrequently refueled and if you go in the morning, you can save about less than 1% and that means it's not very much. You can do a lot of other things to save more than that 1%, such as the credit card thing, you can do 5%, gas buddy, I think you can save like 3 to 5% if you're not going to an expensive gas station and you just kind of, you know, just always go to the cheapest one. You can save up to 3% with proper tire pressure. And I'm sure there's other things that you can do, but those are the main things. So I hope those tips really helps you get the cheapest gas possible. Don't forget to give me a like over here, comment down below if you have any other better ideas on how to get the cheapest gas. And don't forget to subscribe. Thanks for watching.